Today we're going to make this brake pad go from this to this and replace these brake shoes. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Brake Bros. In this episode, we're going to replace brakes on a 2017 Hyundai Accent. We're going to do the back and the front. The backs are drums and the front are calipers. And let's get started. First, we're going to start off by lifting the car and removing the wheel. Then we can proceed by removing this Phillips screw head right here. In many cases, the screw head is going to be rust welded into the drum. So what we can do is we can get a socket, a ratchet, and a bit. This bit is pretty thick, so it can get a good grip on the Phillips head. And as you can see, the socket will fit perfectly on top of the bit. What you're going to want to do is hammer it in gently. That way you don't strip anything whenever you're trying to take it off. And just like that, it'll break free. You can then proceed removing it with a regular Phillips head. I will now remove it by hitting it with a hammer and you can hit it with any hammer as long as you don't hit any of these studs. And sometimes if it does not come off, you will have to access it through the back, through this port right here. And you will need to turn this gear counterclockwise towards the inside of the car. I will be spraying down the drum and this is optional. I am doing this to prevent myself from inhaling any of the brake dust I've also placed an oil pan below to capture any any brake cleaning fluid. You can either use a set of hooks or you can use a set of pliers to remove the springs from the brakes. There will be three springs. There will be one at the top, one at the left, and one at the bottom. The bottom spring will be face down as such and connect to these two holes right there. Now we're going to be removing the hold down spring and we're going to be doing that by pushing down on the hold down and twisting the hold down pin from the back. After removing the springs, the brake shoe will come off. Then we'll be doing the same to the other brake shoe. Take note that when removing these, make sure you put it back in exactly how you took it out. These little corners will be facing you on each side. That way you don't forget. Make sure it goes back in exactly the same way. And this is the gear from the adjuster that I was mentioning earlier that you might have to access if you can't get the drum off. And you don't wanna make it this short, make sure you make it a little bit longer or else you'll have to keep pumping the brake pedal. Next, we will be removing the brake line from the right part of the brake shoe. And I will be doing this with my hands, but they do have a kit that you can get from Harbor Freight or Amazon and I will link each one of those in the description. And now we will be reinstalling the brake shoe onto the brake line. Now we will be applying brake lubricant to the contact points on the brake shoes. And those spots are here, 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 and here. There will be six spots in total. Make sure you cover all of those. I will be using Sail Glide, but you can use any brake lubricant from your auto parts store. Your old brake shoe will have this lever right here. Make sure you take it off and install it on the new one. This triggers the gear on the adjuster. And this is an example of how it works whenever it's functioning. 
Now we will be reinserting the spring hold down pin and installing the spring hold down. It helps to have it straight forward and not at a slant. And now you want to do the same on the other shoe. And I used a pair of pliers to turn the pin because I couldn't get it to fully turn with my fingers. Now we will be installing the adjuster on the shoes. And make sure the gear is facing towards the driver's side door. And make sure that the little corners are facing towards you. If you notice your adjuster keeps falling out, you may want to manually compress the piston by pressing on both sides of the shoe and it should fit snug after that. It will still want to decompress so you want to attach your top spring as quick as you can. Sometimes it is easier to use pliers to reattach them than with the hooks I was using. But it's easier with this tool that they have specially for this as well. Now we will be installing the lever that we mentioned we needed to keep earlier. Here you can see how the lever goes in between the adjuster and how the spring goes on to it. Now we're attaching the bottom portion of that spring. Here you can see where that bottom part went and I will also be reattaching the bottom spring as well. Now before we reinstall the drum, we're going to measure the diameter and you can do that with the specialty tool or like I will be doing with the measuring tape. As you can see we're measuring 8 inches and the maximum diameter here is 205.2 inches and when you convert 8 inches to millimeters you get 203.2 millimeters so we're about 2 millimeters off so we're going to go ahead and replace this drum. When you do that, don't forget to spray down the drum with brake cleaner that way you could get all the oils off next reinstall the screw next you can check and see if your adjuster has a good length by pulling your parking brake and if it stops rotating you're good finally we will be reinstalling the wheel when putting your faceplate back on make sure this notch lines up with the valve once you put on your lug nuts make sure you tighten them down to 80 foot pounds using this pattern and you're all done. Now we'll be moving on to the calipers on the front and we'll be removing the wheel first. There's only four lugs, so you only have to take off four. Next, we're going to be removing the caliper guide pin bolt and I'm going to be removing it with a 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench. There's going to be one at the top and then another one at the bottom. Now you're going to want to remove the caliper and what you can do to hold it is you can get a bungee cord or what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick it in between the spring on the suspension. Next you want to check your rotors after removing your brake pads to check for any damage or defects. If your brake job has been done before by somebody else, make sure you have that little plate I just took off. You will be reusing that. If not, you can proceed without it. Next we'll be removing the hardware that comes with the brakes. You typically want to replace these, but if your kit didn't come without it, it's okay to reuse them. Although I would highly recommend replacing them, and I will be replacing them. Make sure they go in like this. Here's a comparison between a brand new brake pad and an old one. There is still a little bit of pad left, but our client wanted them replaced regardless. Now we will be reinstalling that shield that we took off from the back part of the brake pad and make sure the brake indicator is pointing towards the inside of the vehicle. 
When inserting your brake pads, make sure that there is full surface contact between the rotor and the brake pad. Next, you want to remove the guide pin without damaging the boot that's on the guide pin. Then you want to clean off the old brake lubricant that's on there. And you'll follow up by applying new fresh brake lubricant that you can get from your local auto parts store. Then reinsert it and you could spin it that way none of the brake lubricant comes off. We will be repeating the same process on the lower guide pin. If you accidentally remove both the guide pins, the lower guide pin will have this black strip right here. Next we will want to compress the piston on the brake caliper and there are various methods to doing this. I will be using a specialty brake tool but you could use a standard C-clamp with a metal piece or a piece of wood. Next we're going to be reapplying the brake caliper on the brake. Next, we will be reinstalling the caliper guide pin bolts. You want to torque down the upper and the lower guide pin bolt to 35 foot pounds. Next, we will be reinstalling the wheel and torquing each one of the lugs to 80 foot pounds following this pattern right here. We are now done. Thank you for watching and here's your certificate. Make sure to grab you some merch over on eBay. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and follow us on our other social media platforms.